This is the valley temple of Kephren at the Giza Plateau in Egypt. And right now, walking through this aisle, I feel that I am in Cusco, but Cusco is in the other side of the world. This is so weird. The similarity is unbelievable. My name is Jack Mologaro. I'm a Peruvian American author and researcher. Welcome to my channel. I just entered the Valley Temple, which is very, very close to the Great Sphinx. And I'm just recording for my YouTube channel and looking around until I identify something very familiar to me, which is this that you can see is like an interlock stone or bend rock that goes into the next wall in a quite an intersection. This is so familiar to me. Here, let's take a second look and look at this uh, technique of construction, which is also found here at the Kori Kancha Temple in Cusco, in the other side of the world, at 13,000 plus feet above sea level, or 3,300 meters above sea level. Inside the Kori Kancha Temple, you can find the same technique. Let's look carefully and take a closer look again. In the Kori Kancha Temple. The big difference is that the Santo Domingo Church was built on top of the Kori Kancha Temple, so uh, there's not a damage from erosion like you can see at the Valley Temple. There is another similarity. You practically can't see the line that divide each stone block at the Valley Temple. It's unbelievable, but it's similar to the one at the Kori Kancha Temple. Even though this corner is practically destroyed, you can see on the other side how the stones are glued, like the one here again in other section of the Valley Temple. Look at that, they're glued to each other. The only way possible, in my opinion, is ancient geopolymer. Look here again at the Kori Kancha Temple. It looks the same, it's the same technique. This is what I'm talking about. How we can explain this? How there are no scientists or researchers or geologists, anthropologists, archaeologists talking about this? According to the official explanation, it was under the administration of Pharaoh Kefren who ordered to build this temple. The same situation goes in Cusco, where some historian says that the Incas already found, rebuilt and fixed some of the buildings that are located downtown Cusco, including the Cori Cancha Temple. So who were the ones who built this? I have another example. Walking through this aisle, it really reminds me of Cusco, of any street, any archaeological site in Cusco. If you have visited Cusco, you cannot deny this. This is really, really weird to me because it looks similar to other places that you'll see in a moment. I've been in Cusco more than a dozen times. And here we are at Ollantaytambo, right before the Temple of the Sun, which is in the top of the archaeological site, where more than 9,800 plus feet above sea level, and you will see another wall, similar to the one located in the other side of the planet, at the Valley Temple, the Giza Plateau, in Egypt. How we can explain this? How come we don't have any formal or official explanation? Where we can find an answer about this? There must be one. And the only possibility is, the only possibility is transoceanic communication done by a sophisticated culture in prehistoric times. Look at the Easter Island wall. Look at the Valley Temple wall. These are not coincidences, these are similarities. It's different in size. It's much bigger, but the technique. If you would have been here and also have visited Oyente Tambo, Saxa Woman, and Coricancha, you cannot deny there exists an odd coincidence. I just talked with a tour guide who was with a group of German tourists, and he told me that they believe, and this is not a full answer, that a group of Egyptians, sailors, in an indeterminate time with big ships made with papyrus reed that are quite similar to the Totora reed boats that are still used in the northern coast of Peru, 
at the Titicaca Lake at 13,000 feet above sea level, and also this reed is also located in the remote Easter Island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Reeds there are called pore, and grown on the volcano lakes on Easter Island, meaning that the origin, the source, came from here, and this temple is so different to the typical Egyptian constructions, a different megalithic architecture, for sure. Temples and sites are monumental, but their architectural design are still different, even though they still keep the megalithic construction with themselves. Here is another example of these stones glued to each other, but it is well, well eroded. Indeed, there is a big difference with these T-shaped columns that looks like one solid block. These are not geopolymer, which I suspect from the rest of the stones. Look, for example, at this polygonal shape section of this temple. They are definitely very similar to the ones we can see in Cusco in different archaeological sites. It's so, so typical from Cusco. It's so typical now in Egypt. It's unbelievable. It is surreal that in these times of instant communication, there are no efforts whatsoever from the experts or academia to at least mention these incredible similarities between Egypt and Cusco. How come? I think the main reason is to first avoid illegitimate questions. Second, to research a forgotten chapter in human history. Third, to open the Pandora box. But I'm not the only one doing this independent research about authentic enigmas. It is only a matter of time that people would understand that there was a sophisticated culture that suffered an instant collapse due to a cosmic event. If you want to name it Atlantis, it doesn't matter. What matters is to know who we are as a species and to learn how to avoid a future similar event. Let's go back to the Valley Temple in Egypt. Here we can see a complete different design than you can observe in different temples in Egypt. The period of time when it was built must have been quite older because you can tell it's quite eroded. This temple is part of the Sphinx, nothing else. When Plato talks about his visit in Egypt, never mention the Sphinx because it was already buried in the sand. And that means it's quite, quite old. And remember, the whole area, according to the paleoclimatology, it was as green as the Amazon with the trees, lush vegetation that could have happened only 10 to 12,000 years ago. If you like my video, subscribe and share. We need to increase the awareness of our forgotten past. We need to know. Stay in touch. Thank you so much.